formula for success in anything that you want to do in life ultimately boils down to just two things, information plus motivation. So you need the information, you need to know what to do, and you need the motivation to actually do it. Simple enough, right? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the universe to provide you with both. So let's look into both sides of this equation in a little bit more detail here. So we're going to take a look at how to get the information that's going to make you successful and how to get the motivation that's going to make you successful. So we'll start with information. Well, how do you attain information? Well, there are two ways that you can attain information. Either it comes to you, right? Either you just happen to see it or you happen to hear it somewhere or you go looking for it right? You go looking for answers from someone or a book or a podcast or a YouTube video or whatever, but you're actually actively looking for the information, right? So let's dig deeper into both of those actually and say, okay, well, you know, how does information come to you? Well, there are two ways that it comes to you, either through intuition, that is, you suddenly have that eureka moment, you suddenly have an idea, you wake up with, with some cool idea, um, or in you just know, like it's something downloads into your brain and you know exactly what to do. Or it could be through um, just stumbling upon it, right? So you just happen to see it, right? You're just scrolling through YouTube and you happen to see a video that catches your interest. You click on that and then it gives you some new piece of information that you can use to get to the place where you are successful at the thing that you want to be successful at. Right, so it could be either one. It could be it just comes to you via intuition or it could be that it comes to you through some external source that you just happen to find. And again, like that could be a person uh, that you run into that tells you something interesting. That could be through a book that you happen to see um, at the library. It could be through a video that comes up on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what if you go looking for it, right? Well, how do you know what to look for? Well, probably it comes to you through intuition, right? You suddenly have that eureka moment where you say, wait a minute, I've been trying to do this all on my own and try to figure this all on my own. What if I just go to YouTube and, and Google how to get rich <laughs> or how to uh, have a great relationship, how to do whatever you're trying to do? It just comes to you and in the form of intuition, but the intuition doesn't tell you how to get rich. Exactly. It tells you, why don't you just Google how to get rich? So that tells you what to look for. Or again, it could be stumbling upon, right? Again, it could be stumbling upon. So maybe you happen to talk to a person that suggests that, hey, why don't you just Google this? Or why don't you just go to the library and look for a book on this subject? Right, so you stumble upon something, maybe you stumble upon a YouTube video, maybe I give you a suggestion, maybe I say, hey, if you wanna figure out how to do something, go type it into the YouTube search and, and figure it out on YouTube, right? So you're stumbling upon me that tells you to go looking for the other thing, right? So you see what's going on here is that it's the same thing in both cases, whether it comes to you or you go looking for it, it's either your intuition, something coming to you, or you're stumbling upon it. Same thing in either case. And so where do these come from, right? Now that's the question, like where is intuition, where does that come from? And most, our, our scientific based Western society really does not have a good answer for that question at all. Because intuition clearly is something spiritual. There is some information that is coming to us in a way from a source that we don't know what it is. We don't know where it's coming from for us to just have a new idea appear in our head without having had any apparent external thing that brought that idea in. And people that are geniuses, by the way, will tell you that it's just like an idea was given to them. It's not they created the idea, it's the idea was given to them. That's what it feels like. Um, and so we, we really don't have a good explanation for this. And you know, we as a Western society are obsessed with science. Like we believe that Science should be the be all end all of every human knowledge and, and that's the only way of gaining knowledge. And this is really kind of ridiculous. I, and I'm not saying anything against science, right? Science is wonderful. It's given us a lot of good things, but it's not the only game in town, right? There's, there are a lot of ways of gaining knowledge before, you know, science is young. Science has only been around for a few hundred years. Uh, 
before that, like how did how did humans learn stuff? How did humans get by in society? How did humans build the pyramids? <laughs> right? There's there's other ways of knowing things than just through science. And if you you are one of those people that's just kind of myopically focused on science and you ignore everything else, well, you're gonna get this tiny sliver of reality that's available to you and everything else is not going to be available to you. You're not gonna trust your intuition because you can't explain it, right? And it's funny actually that most of the great scientists created their their um, innovations through intuition, right? They had intuition that they themselves could not explain where it came from or why, but that's what led to the great scientific developments. Anyway, I'm getting off on tangent here, but the point is that intuition is huge. Intuition is an enormous part of success. And so it's a little woo woo and a lot of people shy away from that. But the truth is, if you want to be successful, you have to embrace it. You have to accept it because uh, this is absolutely critical. And as I'm going to say later, I'm going to show you later in this video, there are ways to direct your intuition. There are ways to improve your intuition so that good ideas are coming to you. Now, second one, stumbling upon. Well, what does what determines whether you happen to stumble upon the information that happens to come to you? The scientific people would say that, oh, it's just a mere coincidence, um, it, which is really just a, a way of saying, I have no idea. <laughs> they, they really can't, um, can't explain that at all. It's, it's laws of the universe that they don't yet understand. So both of these are kind of woo woo and kind of spiritual. And again, both of these I'm going to go through later in the video, how exactly to create them, how to make them work for you in order to get the things that you want to get in your life. So that gives us a pretty good idea of the information side of the equation. Now we're going to go over to the motivation side. Motivation. Motivation equals desire plus faith. Desire plus faith, right? What makes you motivated for something? Well, you want it, right? And the more that you want it, the more motivated you are, plus Faith, you believe that you can actually get it, right? So if you've ever wondered like why you're not motivated, why you can't, you know, get yourself up out of bed in the morning and, and do the things that you, that you believe that you need to do in order to get to the goal that you need to get, well, probably one of these two things is lacking. Either you don't have enough desire for it, like, okay, maybe it would be nice, but it's not worth the effort, or you just don't believe at your core that it is attainable or you don't believe that it is attainable for you. So, uh, you know, I think about when I was a musician, I, I was laser focused. My, my goal, my biggest goal for a long period of my life when I was younger was to be a successful musician. And I played in, in rock bands and I spent, you know, when I was a teenager, I spent like 12 to 14 hours a day sitting in my room playing guitar over and over and over again. Like I was super motivated. But when I started actually playing in bands and, and doing it for a few years, well, both my, my desire and my faith kind of started to slip, right? So the desire after a while, it was just kind of going to band practice. It was playing the same things over and over again. It got boring. And I was I like I remember I, I could barely even focus on what I was playing It was just completely on autopilot. And I was all off thinking about other things. And I lost that that um, desire for the rock star life that I had so wanted before. All of a sudden, it, it just didn't appeal to me anymore. And then I started to realize that, you know, the rock star life means that you're you're basically dependent on these four other guys in your band that are kind of prima donna sometimes, they're kind of a pain. And, you know, when you want to make money, basically you have to tour around the country um, with, you know, sitting in a car for like six to eight hours a day. I did this for once, it was only two weeks. It was fun, but it was exhausting. And, and so I just realized, and you know, staying up late, like breathing in cigarette smoke all night, every night, it just, it was not really that appealing to me after I, I kind of um, got to experience it a little bit. So so the desire just kind of went away. And so I was just going through the motions instead of 
really having the motivation to do what I knew that I needed to do. So I would come to band practice because it was a habit and I was expected to. But the other things, the, you know, the like marketing side of it, which is really what we needed, I just didn't have the motivation to do. Right. And, and it was in large part because of the desire. And then, you know, faith is self-explanatory. And that kind of came into the play later on, too. It's like after playing a playing bars with just like five to ten people enough times, it's it got to the point where there was that repetition where I, I stopped believing that my dream was even possible. And so that kind of wore away at my motivation as well. So if you want to have motivation, you need to have both desire and faith. And again, I'm going to go into how to have those things later on in this video. And actually, this part about faith specifically reminds me of uh, one of my students in my, my coaching program. I teach people how to create online courses that make them a bunch of money and give them a lifestyle of freedom, et cetera, et cetera, by showing people how to do something that they already know how to do that makes people's lives better. And I've got a, a guy in one of in my program that has is working on a course on how to help people get taller, <laughs> like how to a, a series of exercises that he learned from, I think, some like Russian strength coach that that will actually stretch your spine and make you a couple inches taller. So I think this is an interesting example because I, I you know, I told him that there is no lack of desire, like literally men will pay a hundred thousand dollars to have to go to, to a surgery well to have like all of their legs broken and and like braces put to stretch their bones to make them a couple inches taller and they'll spend tons of money on this right so the desire is enormous but what he's going to run into i believe and this is the biggest hoop that i'm that i'm working with him on is that people it's people are going to be skeptical if you tell people that you know you can teach people um, how to be taller, like you can teach them exercises that will make them taller. The first thing is going to be like, ah, oh, that sounds like BS. I don't believe that. Right. So if people have, you could have all the desire in the world, but if you don't believe that it would work, um, then then ultimately you're not going to have the motivation. And for somebody who's selling courses like my student, he wants his prospects to be motivated, right? Because if they're not motivated, then they're not going to buy his course and they're not going to get results, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to um, find ways to build their faith, right? We need to, to show them proof and show them examples and explain how it works scientifically, et cetera, et cetera, so that they have that faith, which will couple with the desire to create motivation. Okay, so now we've gone into both sides of this equation and kind of fleshed them out a little bit. Now we can actually create an equation for how to create success. I'm going to boil this down to a mathematical equation. And so look at what we have. Basically, when we boil it down, we have what? Intuition, stumbling upon the right information, desire, faith, right? So that's it. There's really, there's just really four things. So success equals, right? We already have success equals information plus motivation. And we know that uh, information equals intuition plus stumbling upon. I should really find a better word for that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't want to call it coincidence because I don't believe that it is a coincidence. I think it just looks like that to people that don't understand the laws at play here. But um, so for now, for lack of a better word, we'll just leave it as stumbling upon, right? Because both the both sides of it ultimately come down to intuition plus stumbling upon. And then we have uh, motivation equals desire plus faith. So we can we can have a master equation here that is success equals intuition plus stumbling plus desire plus faith, right? That, that is our master equation. Success equals intuition plus stumbling upon plus desire plus faith. So let's go into how to develop each part of this equation so that we can have the full picture and we can create a game plan for how we are going to develop each part of this and ultimately get to our goals successfully. So if, if this if you can get all four of these, ultimately success becomes inevitable.
as we've already shown. And by the way, notice that every single part of this, intuition, stumbling upon stuff, desire, and faith, none of this is tangible, right? None of this is like you can't have, you don't have units of faith that you can measure with a ruler, right? You can't, you don't have molecules of intuition. So this is, none of this is scientific. All of this is 100% spiritual, right? And this is a big theme that I hammer over and over again, especially on my other channel, is that success is ultimately spiritual. Like every ingredient to success is something spiritual. So, you know, if you're stuck in this mindset of like, oh, I just reject all that woo-woo stuff, well, you're missing the boat, right? Like the, the woo-woo stuff is where, you know, where it happens. Anyway, so let's go into each of these in detail. So, intuition. And let me actually create another sheet here. So, intuition. Um, basically, what do you need to do in order to have intuition? Well, you need to get clear on what you want, right? And this is this is my method. This works very well for me, and you're more than welcome to uh, try it for yourself. So first of all, you get clear on what, what ex actually it is that you want and, and don't skip this step because like a lot of people never do this, right? They, they're, a lot of people are so focused on what they don't want, they, like the things about their job that they hate and their boss that's a jerk and their you know, family member that's a pain and, and et cetera, et cetera. And so they never really get clear on what they do want. Um, and, and that was one of my problems with the band when I was a musician is like I knew, I mean, I, I thought that I wanted to be a, a famous musician, but I didn't really think about why. Like, I didn't think any deeper into that. It's like, okay, what about being a famous musician is actually appealing to me, right? Like, is it that, that people think that I'm important? Is it that I make a lot of money? Is it that I get a lot of girls? Like, what, what part of that is important to me? And, you know, if I had dug a little deeper into that, I would have realized that one of my biggest values is freedom. And the musician lifestyle doesn't really give you a whole lot of freedom. So I probably would have said, okay, well, how can I have these things that I want? The, you know, sense of importance, et cetera, the money, plus also have freedom. And probably I would have figured out that it was through something other than music. So this is really, really important that you get absolutely clear on what it is that you want, then you want to uh, visualize what you want, right? You want to think about like, how does it feel? What's it like? You know, what is what does my life look like when I have these things that I want? And, and by the way, this is kind of directing you. This is like you're 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 directing your your ship. You have a ship and it's directed towards a certain point on the compass. Well. You know, if you're directed towards, if you're focused on the things that you don't want, well, your, your ship is directed towards more of the things that you don't want. Whereas if you're directed towards the thing that you do want, then your ship is directed towards the thing that you do want. You can think of this in, like when you're driving, um, you know, they tell you, look at the place that you want to go. If you are, let's say you're, you're driving down the road and you're looking out the right window and you're trying to drive straight, well, eventually your car is going to start veering to the right because that's where you're looking. Um, or, you know, if they tell you, they tell you if you play tennis, look at the spot where you want the ball to go. Um, because if you're looking at a different, like where you direct your attention is where your energy goes. It's where the, the destination of your car or, if, you know, if you're walking, it's the same thing. Or if you're hitting a tennis ball, focus on the thing that you actually want. And the best way to do that is to visualize it. You know, think about what it looks like, what it feels like, what it tastes like, et cetera, et cetera. Kind of live in the moment of that thing that you want. And that will that will serve to direct your intuition. And then next step is to ask for guidance, right? This is getting that information. Ask for guidance. And and you don't even have to know who you're asking, right? You can ask God, you can ask the universe, you can ask your guardian angel, you can ask the the higher spirits that surround you, um, you know, either way, like whatever one you do, the, the mechanism of transmitting that information is the same. You can even ask yourself, like you can ask your higher self, you can ask your subconscious mind, 
uh, either way, the the information will come to you. And if I mean, if we're honest, like we don't really know very well where exactly it's coming from, if it's coming like God is directly giving it to us or if it's coming from our subconscious mind or whatever, like it's it's really hard to know. But I'm telling you from experience that this process works. So ask for guidance. And then finally, listen, just listen. And this is something that a lot of people have a hard time with. Uh, the Bible says, you know, that God speaks in a still small voice. Well, that means that we have to be quiet in order to hear it, right? So we visualize what we want, we ask for guidance, and then we listen. We actually pay attention to our intuition. So often we have this, this feeling or this little nudge to do something or to, or, or this feeling that something is true without actual, actually it being proven. And us in our, our tiny myopic scientific worldview just kind of shunt it to the side and ignore it. We say, well, I can't explain where this voice is coming from, so I'm just gonna ignore it. So if you listen and actually give it some value, then you'll start to, um, well, for one thing, you'll actually be able to act on it, right? If you listen to it. And then also you'll start getting in the habit of listening to it and it'll become stronger and it'll become more familiar to you. And you'll also start to recognize when there's a good influence versus a bad influence, right? Because there are, you know, the, it's the old cartoon with the the devil sitting on one shoulder and the angel sitting on the other shoulder and they're both talking in your ear, it, like you need to know which one to listen to. And that's something that you that you get with practice. And again, I'm getting uh, way off on the spiritual side here, but um, if you learn to listen, good things will happen. Put it, put it simply that way. Okay, so that's intuition. That's how to, how to develop intuition. Now, Let's, let's do our um, stumble upon. How do you stumble upon things? Well, again, like the scientific people would say that, oh, it's just a purely coincidence. It's totally random, even though actually um, <laughs> it is funny. I, as far as I know, science cannot even prove that random exists. And, and you know, this has been a, a problem that has plagued computer science for a long time is that, um, we want to be able to generate random numbers, but how do you even define what is a random number? And I, I actually had an experience with this. It was kind of funny. Um, when, I was, when I was really young, my dad was a computer programmer. And when computers were, were pretty new, he showed me um, a little bit of computer programming. And he showed me how to create a game, like a, a computer game, that was for doing math, essentially. So it basically the idea was it would give you what is this random number plus this random number, and then you would have to answer. And then if you're right, it would say, congratulations. If you're wrong, you would say, no, you're wrong. And so we had this random number generator that was saying, randomly generate this number plus randomly generate this number. And so, it was, let's say it would say like, what is five plus seven? And it randomly generated the five and the seven. And it would say, and we'd say 12 and it would say, yay, congratulations, you're right. And then the second question, what is five plus seven? We'd say, uh, okay, well, that's a funny coincidence. And we put in 12 and they say, yay, you're right. And then it would say, what is five plus seven? And then we put in 12. And then it would say, what is six plus three? And then we put in, okay, it's nine, enter. What is six plus three? Well, you just asked us this, it's, it's nine. Okay, what is six plus three? And it would keep, what we figured out eventually is that this ra so-called random number generator was using the time of day from the computer and doing some transformation on that to try to come up with a number that appeared random. And so if you if you did the, the uh, random number generator multiple times within the same minute, then it would give you the same numbers. And then once the minute changed, then it would give you different numbers. So it's kind of funny that we, we think we have this idea of randomness, but really we have no reason to believe that randomness even exists. It seems to me that randomness is just a, the appearance 
of a series of events or a series of numbers that we just don't understand the reason for, right? But just because we don't understand the reason for it does not mean that it's actually truly random. So anyway, if you wanna stumble upon something, um, which again, is not random, right? I mean, this is something that's that's been studied, like Carl Jung has done work on this. Here's what I do. One, get clear on what you want. This might look a little bit familiar. Uh, visualize what you want, and then ask to bring the means to you, and then pay attention. Right, so it's almost exactly the same as for intuition, right? You just get clear on you want on what you want. You visualize what you want. You ask, and again, you ask your guardian angel, or you ask God, or you ask the universe, or whatever. You ask your subconscious mind. It all works the same way to bring the means to you, right? To bring the information that you need to you. Which I mean, honestly, is pretty much the same thing as asking for guidance, except instead of. Uh, it coming through your intuition, it comes, it's just a, a video that pops up in your face. Right. And then finally, you pay attention, which again is about the same thing as listen, except here you're, you're actually keeping your eyes out for resources in your surroundings rather than a voice that is coming to you. And by the way, both of these, um, it, well, especially this one, this one activates what's called your retic reticular activation system. So the way that works is that you have unlimited stimulus in your surrounding. Like there's a million things that you could focus on. If you just think, you, you know, look around you right now, like what are all the things that you could focus on? Well, there's a wall and there's a light and there's a blinds and then there's a tree out the window and there's another tree. Like how many of those things did you notice um, before, like before I, I asked you to notice? Well, probably very, very little because there's so many things that you can notice at one time uh, or that are available to be noticed, but you can't really focus on a lot of things at one time. So any given moment, you're only noticing a tiny, tiny fraction, like less than 1% of what's in your environment. And so what your reticular activation system is, is a way for your brain essentially to choose what it wants to focus on. And so if you get clear on what you want and visualize what you want, then those things, the things that relate to that, like the things that, that create opportunities to get what you want are going to be more noticeable to you. The classic example is if you get a, um, if you get a new car, right? Like a, of a different model than you ever had before. Let's say you get a, Nissan Sentra and you never had a Nissan Sentra before. Well, all of a sudden, as soon as you get that car, you start to see Nissan Sentras everywhere, right? And it's not because they weren't there before and they just appeared. It's because you weren't noticing them because it wasn't meaningful to you. But now if you, let's say that you, I, you want to learn to play piano and you never wanted to learn piano before. Well, now all of a sudden, if a video comes up on YouTube saying how to learn piano, well, all of a sudden that's going to get your, your interest, whereas you probably wouldn't have even noticed it before. So when you get clear on what you want, you start visualizing it, then you start to notice all of the things that could help you to get to what you want, and specifically all of the information that can help you to get to what you want. And another cool thing that I wanted to, I meant to say this earlier in the video, but I forgot, but that that this intuition and stumbling upon like how to well really plus motivation is is really interesting illustration in the bible in one of jesus's parables he says that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that's buried in a field and there's a, a man that's that works in that field and all of a sudden he finds the treasure and then when he finds the treasure, he goes and, and sells everything that he has and buys the field from the owner in order to get the treasure, right? And then there's another parable right after that that's similar. He says that there's a man who is looking for a pearl of great price. He's looking for a particular pearl and he's looking all over the world to find this pearl that he believes exists, but he doesn't know where it is. So he's looking for it and eventually he finds the person that has it and he goes and sells that everything that he has 
in order to buy the pearl. And so what's this showing is exactly the two ways of, of success, right? Let me, if we scroll up here, the information plus motivation, and particularly the two ways of getting information, right? So in the first part, the, the guy is just working in the field and all of a sudden he happens to find this treasure, right? It comes to him. And so once he has the information, right, the information is that the treasure is in the field. Well, now he has the motivation, right? He desires the treasure. He has the faith because he knows he's seen the treasure. He has the faith that it's there. And so what does he do? Well, he sells all of his possessions in order to be able to buy the field, right? To get the success that he wants to get. So he, the information comes to him and he has the motivation and he takes the action. Now, in the other story about the pearl of great price, he's going and looking for it, right? He's looking for this pearl. Eventually he finds it. And then he, again, sells everything that he has in order to get this pearl, right? Information that he went looking for plus motivation. So I thought that was super cool because that's, I, I was coming up with this without even thinking about that. And I realized that story is exactly what I'm talking about here, right? Like this, again, this, this is spiritual. This is spiritual wisdom that has been with us for thousands of years. But most of us, you know, as the Bible just says, don't have eyes to see, don't have ears to hear. And so we're, we're kind of figuring this out again. Anyway, so those are the ways of getting uh, information. Intuition plus stumble upon. Now, next thing in our, our success equation here is desire. Well, how do, you, uh, how do you create desire? Well, really, you don't create desire. I mean, desire, you, can, you can take a desire that's already there and increase it, right? So uh, this, I mean, you know, for, for like a lot of you guys, the desire is not, it's not a big deal. But, you know, if you want to increase your desire, what you do is, okay, clear <laughs> what you want and visualize what you want, right? And so, and especially you want to feel it, right? You really want to feel what it's like to have it. And so that's just going to increase your desire, right? The, the more that you give it your attention, the more you give it energy, the bigger the desire becomes, the more compelling that it becomes. So, you know, it may be that your desire is already plenty compelling already, but the more you think about it, the more you focus on it, the more compelling it becomes and the higher your desire becomes and, and thus the greater the motivation. And then finally, Last part here is faith. And this is a big stumbling block for a lot of people. Desire is usually a little easier. <laughs> faith, how do you have faith? Well, you get clear on what you want and you visualize what you want. There you go, here it is again. You notice there's, there's a bit of a pattern here, right? And, which is cool because it's like one solution for every step of the equation. So what happens when you visualize what you want? Well, the question is, where does faith come from, right? Well, faith comes from repeated exposure to something. So for example, let's say that, um, that you know there's that, that building in Chicago, the tall building where there's this like glass room that's, that's way up high and it's over the city. If you go for the first time to that building, I've never been to it, I've only seen pictures, but I would expect if you go to that building and you step out on that glass floor where it looks like there's nothing under you, that would be freaky. Like that would, that would scare most people. Um, but let's say that you work at that building and let's say you're in charge of cleaning that, that room and you've stepped out on that glass floor 10,000 times. Well, what, what's going to happen? You, where's your fear going to be? Are you going to be afraid of stepping on that glass floor? No, you're not, right? You're going to have complete faith because you've had so much repetition with the same result. I step on the floor, it holds me up. I step on the floor, it holds me up. I step on the floor, it holds me up, right? Repetition breeds faith. If the same thing 
If you do the same thing, get the same result over and over and over again, that builds faith. Now, the problem is, what do you do if it's something that you've never done before, right? And so the way to build faith, if you've never done it before, is a little, a little hack into the way that your mind works, is that you can visualize yourself having done it and visualize the results because your subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between something that's actually happened and just something that is visualized. So if you visualize yourself going out on that glass floor a thousand times, right? Like you visualize that scene a thousand times in your mind and every single time the glass floor holds you up with no problem, well, what's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna have faith. You're, you'll develop faith. Faith is just a, a thought that is repeated over and over and over again. Um, and so if you can get clear on what you want and visualize it what you want in the present tense, visualizing it happening in exactly the way that you desire and feeling that you have right now um, what you desire. And again, this is something that, that's repeated in the Bible. Jesus says, when you pray for something, and um, I, I might be butchering the words a little bit, but it says, if you pray for something and, and believe that you have already received it, right? In the present tense, believe that you already have it, then it will be done unto you, right? So prayer and visualization are very similar because if you pray, you're visualizing as you pray. And you know, if you want to pray as you are visualizing, then, then go right ahead, right? I mean, that, that will only make it stronger. Um, but if you will visualize the thing that you desire to have as though it's already done in this moment, as though you already have it um, and see it or if you're, you know, thinking about doing something, you see yourself as doing it and having the desired result. If you do that enough times, you're going to build very strong faith. So that's that's all four elements here. So let's put it all together. You know, you I'm sure you noticed that these are all very similar to each other. So let's put it all together in one like master system here. So what do we have? One, get clear on what you want, right? Know exactly what it is that you want and why. And, and that's worth taking some time to do. I have other videos on my channel all about how to do that. Um, and you know, the, the gist of it is you want to dig a little deeper. It's like, okay, I want to make six figures a year. Well, why? Like, you know, the, a number is not very compelling. You want to know the why. Why do you want six figures a year? What is that money going to do for you? Like what, wh how is your life going to be different when you make that money? And, and you might find that there's another way to attain the same thing that you want in a different way than making money or a different way or whatever it is that, that you thought was the way to it. So number one, get clear on what you want. That's huge. Two, uh, visualize what you want, feel it and present tense, right? So don't think about like what you want in, or don't, don't think about is this is what I'm going to get. This is, I am experiencing this right now and experience it, feel it as much as you can, right? Feel how, how good it feels, feel how it feels emotionally, feel how it feels on your physical senses, right? Um, et cetera. So visualize what you want, ask for guidance, right? And again, whatever, whatever makes the most sense for you, right? So depending on your belief system, if you want to ask God, then ask God. If you want to ask your subconscious mind, ask your subconscious mind. If you want to ask your guardian angel, ask your guardian angel. Just whatever, whatever is, is most compelling for you, ask for guidance. And then finally, listen slash pay attention, right? Listen to the guidance of your subconscious mind or your guardian angel. Listen and pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to the things that could get you closer to your goal. Pay attention to what might be a resource that could get you closer to your goal. So this is it. Follow these four steps and do this. If you make this a practice of doing this every day, then success becomes inevitable. And by the way, if you're looking at this and you're saying, well, that sounds a whole lot like that law of attraction stuff and that manifesting stuff. Well, you're absolutely right. 
That, that's exactly the same thing. So what I've done in this video is not just told you, you know, this is what you should do and, and like hope that it works. I'm telling you like going through the, the equation for success and showing you from that, like how to create every aspect of that. And it just so happens that it, it creates the, the end result is the same thing as the law of attraction people are teaching. And, you know, a lot of people shy away from law of attraction. They don't like it because they think that law of attraction is just, you know, sitting around dreaming and you don't do any action. And so I, I hope that I've demonstrated that that's not the case here, right? The point is to create, to, to bring you the correct information and then give you the motivation. And then once you have what to act on and the motivation, the desire, the fuel to act, well, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to act, right? I, it's just, it's just like the, the basic outcome of having information plus motivation is you take the action and you get the result. So I'm not saying just sit around dreaming all the time, because if you have motivation to do stuff, well, then you're going to do stuff, right? Just basic logic here. And by the way, I did um, kind of as I was finishing up this video, I, I realized I, there is another thing in here in the motivation section that that might hold some people back. And that is a feeling of worthiness, right? So I'll write that in. So some people feel that they don't deserve success, right? They desire the thing. They believe that they could have it, but they don't believe that they're actually worthy. They don't believe that they deserve it. And sometimes that's for a particular reason. Like sometimes that's because they've done something bad and they, they feel bad about themselves and they feel like they don't deserve good things. Or it could be for a reason that they can't identify. It's just this general feeling of unworthiness. And so I'm not going to get into this in this particular video, but I will uh, put a link in the description to a video on my other channel all about how to feel worthy. And in fact, I could even put probably I could even put worthiness as part of faith, right? Because you have to um, you have to believe that it's possible, but you also have to believe that you're worthy of it, right? You have to believe that attaining your desire is possible plus that you deserve it. Because if you feel like you don't deserve it, then you're probably going to sabotage yourself. You're probably going to hold yourself back. And ultimately, you're not going to have the motivation necessary for getting to your desire. Now, one last thing I want to do for you is um, give you a chance to stumble upon some information that is going to help you get to your goals. If you would like to be making as much money as a doctor, while working from home, working part time hours, check out this video that will show you exactly how to do that. So you've just stumbled upon some good information that might help you to reach your goals if, in fact, that sounds like your goals.